Uh, I know I sell t-shirts, uh, John sells t-shirts, Katie sells prints, Joey sells t-shirts. So you guys all sell stuff not related to your comic? Yeah, that's a secret. Oh, okay. You give away the comic for free, <laughs> gotcha. and uh, people buy. That's a secret. It is. It's, it's great. It's, it's insane. I have to go and do a comic online, and that I, the comic's are free, and you can buy a t-shirt if you want. And that's what keeps me off the street. People are like, that doesn't make no sense. Why are you lying to me? <laughs> Which is bad because I, I did ask you this is an unrelated story, but I'm committed now. I was at a party where I pretended to be a doctor because everybody was a doctor party. All these medical students. And uh, I said I was Dr. Cornelius Townsend. And, uh, and this woman was really drunk and she believed me. And I didn't think she did. And then she walked up and I was there with my, my girlfriend at the time. And she's like, oh, you met my boyfriend Ryan. She's like, no, I was, his name's Cornelius. <laughs> And I told the story to other people, and they thought that, like I was a bad guy in the story because I had lied to a stranger for no reason. And it's true, that was a bad thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to mention also that even though a lot of the people here sell things like t-shirts that aren't related to the comic, there definitely is an appetite for good comics in print. If you have a collection of them, just people would want to pay to see them every day, like pay your website but would uh, buy them in the book later on. Um, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Uh, people will buy books of stuff that's already available for free online because they like to read not in front of the computer, which is also nice. And there are other future options. There are book collections, but you know, there's also media. You can sell the rights to your comic to cartoon television. It takes time. It's an investment. You know, I've been buttered up for five years now, and we just got off show this year for a couple of You know, Hawaii's on a great But, you know, but, you know it takes time. You put your, your the hard work in, people will see the good work in, the enjoyment, and, you know, the thing is so. Also, it's, uh, I, I do a lot of good illustration, and the comic is great, so it's great to do. Uh, I can't wait to do any, any sort of work, so it's a good one. It's, it's like a good way to meet, you know, a community who's interested in it. Well, you're interested. Well, like artistically, like I, I started off, I'm a freelance artist, and I've been mean, working for 13 years just freelancing. But most of my artwork was very dark, and I did sci fi work for games, video games, comics, and stuff. And my actual web comics, the art that I do for those is actually clients have found them online and called me up and go, hey, can you do an ad for us in that style for your comic? And I'm like, sure. So it has turned on work as well in, in the freelance genre. And Matt, your publisher, found you through seeing your work online. So whether you end up publishing a book yourself, which many web cartoonists do, or uh, having a publisher, I mean, you save a lot on stamps, sending out copies for submissions. I don't, I don't mail. That's it's such a it's a yeah, it's a money loser for mail. Stuff <laughs> it costs you a lot of money. It's just nice to have someone else do it. Please. <coughs> Yeah, well, 90% of the stories are true, just kind of embellished sometimes. I did for a while, yeah, it happened. And, uh, you know, Andy's in there, and my buddy Rob's in there. And it started out because people, uh, this would be a newspaper strip back about, I don't know, like uh, seven years ago, we got requested a newspaper strip. And I used to make fun of all my friends in high school, but I'd run little comics about them. So I was figuring, well, I'm good at making fun of my friends, so let's just take that the natural progression and, you know, And so the, the print version failed due to, um, I think, backing support or something like that. And we decided to try it on the web. We thought we were, like, engineers of a new thing. And then we went there, and we're like, oh, there's other millions of web comics out here. So, you yeah. know. But uh, it just happened, something I did in high school turned into a comic that, you know, I like doing. There's a line if you want you. You finally got it. So, Ramon, you said you take stuff to real life. Yeah. Um, has that come back and bitten you? No, yeah, a little bit, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. Oh, I can get in trouble. No, I've, I've had stuff like, because we go heavily into, you know, like dating, masturbation, uh, coffee. And I've had girls like, I go on dates, you know, dates, and then they read the comic and they're like, I don't know if I like you as much. So you're, kind of, you're kind of, you know, weird. You know, it's like because the characters become their own. They, they separate from you and they become their own, their own entities, right? And you kind of just push them a little bit farther. So where I might be apathetic to one thing, they, you know, my character might just hate the world or something like that. Do you find people are disappointed when they meet you? Because I've had. I mean, I know. <laughs> Wait, that sounded terrible. <laughs> I know I'm. 
No, what I meant was that um, well, when people read your <laughs> but when, when people read your work, they kind of get an idea of. I mean, this is something I, I talked with Joey in the past, where we sort of gotten so far into write what you know that people forget you don't. It doesn't have to be that way. And if you write something where a character is saying something terrible, it doesn't necessarily necessarily mean that you share the same thing. Yeah, if, if you, like I said, the characters take on their own personalities and they kind of diverge from you. But he looks like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's caused a little bit of trouble, but the, the benefits of being more positive than, you know, than negative. Comics like trigger enthusiasm, they're like exaggerated. Yeah, so you and your family. Exactly, yeah, you know, so I just take the, the weird nuances of my friends and kind of just push them to the limits, you know. And he, you know, likes to drink, and I make his character a drunk in the comic. <laughs> 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 But, uh, that's true, yeah, I make him skinnier, so he's better looking. <laughs> so, uh, everyone else, are people disappointed when they meet you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're disappointed when they meet me. <laughs> Nobody's met me. <laughs> I don't know if they were disappointed or disappointed. Because my comics were very sad, people are sort of disappointed, I think, when I'm not really sad all the time. Like, <laughs> I don't know what what they expect me to do. Like, um, I don't know. People are disappointed. People are disappointed that I'm not Korean. Uh, I'm sorry. You know. It's true. Uh, I, I wasn't even sure what, what comic it is when I, when I didn't hear your name. I was disappointed that you weren't Korean. <laughs> Actually, I'm disappointed about all of you. <laughs> this is life with Joey. Okay, uh, uh, going further with the, uh, the possibilities of the web beyond the financial possibilities, uh, one of the things that you can try out uh, comics that there is no known market for. Uh, you know, the, the market for comics, uh, while broader now than it was five years ago, uh, would not, you know, no one would consider publishing this sort of genre. So, from your stuff is very, the Joey is very formally different from what conventional comic book publishers are looking for. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are people out there trying things that one would not uh, necessarily would not necessarily assume there would be a market for it. And is, is that potential? Does anyone want to speak to that potential? Potential to try things that you believe in, perhaps, but other people do not? Um, well, I think that, in a way, uh, the new technology created a much larger market. Like, the internet came along, and everybody got onto the internet, and spent all their time on it, and realized that it was fucking boring. So they'll look at anything. Like, you can put up a picture, a picture of the same dinosaurs every day, just saying. <laughs> Whatever popped into your head, and people would be like, well, I can check my email again. Or, <laughs> Look at those fucking dinosaurs. I <laughs> See, I was going to say something about uh, how the internet lets you reject people you wouldn't otherwise read. Well, like comic like Dinosaur so Comics can survive in a paper where of the readership of 50,000, two would like it. Online, you can reach those two and two hundred more. But you basically said that it like insulted me. <laughs> no, no, don't get me wrong. There, there. He's right. He's got those two hundred and two people. Then <laughs> I didn't realize this is actually going to be a showdown. <laughs> I love dinosaur comics. I discovered dinosaur comics. I was reading it week one. Just so you know, there's a. a uh, I guess uh, I mentioned at the beginning uh, Scott McCloud, who made a lot of, uh, uh, did a lot of theorizing in one of his books about uh, infinite canvas, certain things that one can do uh, using using the computer, using the computer screen that one cannot cannot do in print. Yet most of the web web comics that uh, are well known that uh, people are drawn to really stick within the confines of things that can be done in print. And there are often book collections of those. Has anyone has anyone tried anything that would not come off in print, or have any inclination to sort of use these other uh, these other possibilities? Well, there's there's the like the hidden text, which isn't something you can do in print. Where you've got the way it looks visually, and then if you hold the mouse over it, you get a second. Okay. I guess you